One of the joys of York Station is that it is open. Anyone can come and go through this grey two listed structure. Historically, however, this openness has been challenged, and through history there have been proposals to install barriers. Examining such proposals and the responses to them can be instructive in demonstrating how stations are contested spaces between the public, who see them as public spaces and possess a sense of ownership over them, and their corporate owners and operators, who might have different objectives. Firstly, I want to take you back to 2009. The National Express East Coast franchise was struggling, and possibly as a result, it put in a planning application to install 17 automatic ticket barriers at York Station in an attempt, primarily, to cut fare dodging. Gating, the company's spokesman said, will help prevent fraudulent travel and protect revenue that can be invested back into enhanced facilities while improving the environment of York Station and security for customers and staff. The backlash to these proposals by York residents was considerable, and a group, Campaign Against Barriers at York Station, was established. The campaigner's principal objection was that a historic public building that was perceived as a public space and which was a piece of the city's heritage that residents had a strong sense of ownership over would be damaged and that access to it would be restricted. Werner Campbell, who began the opposition campaign, commented at the time that none of National Express's reasoning for wanting to erect barriers justified, quote, both vandalising a listed building and causing an extraordinary degree of inconvenience to both passengers and their friends and family. As such, faced with a backlash, the council threw out National Express's planning application. The council, in effect, sided with the idea that the station was a public space, and that people should be able to use it as such. This perception of York Station being a public space, with the public having a sense of ownership over it, is also in evidence in 1930, when barriers were actually installed at the station. Late in the year, the London North Eastern Railway turned the station into a closed one. Barriers were installed on the city side, which at that point was the only access point, and in addition, the footbridge was moved 15 feet to where it is today, although I'm not really sure why that was needed. Like National Express's plans years later, the LNER claimed that turning York into a closed station would have financial benefits. With barriers installed, no longer would tickets for York be collected at wayside stations or during the train journey, affecting savings through reducing the number of clerical staff and ticket inspectors. Also, train delays they hoped would be reduced. The LNER was acutely aware of the need to convey a message that, after making York a closed station, the station would remain a public space. In its PR, it stressed how platform tickets would still be issued, and through enlarging the concourse, people would have access to more of the station. In contrast to recent events, turning York into a closed station was, however, seen as a positive thing by observers. The Yorkshire Post and Leeds Intelligencer said that the changes would result in York Station becoming a public resort, attracting both passengers and non-passengers alike. Indeed, its railway correspondent stated that the changes were good news because the railway companies had for too long had too much of the, quotes, trespassers will be prosecuted and for passengers only frame of mind. This individual's praise was therefore underpinned by an idea that York Station, and by extension other stations, should conform to a general idea held by people that stations were public spaces over which they had a sense of ownership. So to summarise, these two events in York Station's history regarding barriers indicate how people and local residents can see station spaces as public spaces over which they have some sense of ownership and how this can sometimes be at odds and be aligned with the objectives of the station's owners and operators.